Real meal for five bucks. Real meal for five bucks. Real meal for five bucks. To give you a good laugh or scare, here are the top 10 most ridiculous fast food commercials. Part two. <laughs> Burger King, scary clowns. I hate clowns. There's been a big mistake. It's no secret that Burger King and McDonald's aren't the best of friends. In fact, they might be the biggest rivals in the fast food industry. This is why when BK released this frightening commercial, the obvious mockery could not be ignored. Starting in 2017, everyone who showed up at a Burger King wearing a clown costume on Halloween would get a free Whopper. So far, so good. But the only problem? The promotion was stamped with a hashtag scary clown night tag and came with a very, very disturbing commercial. You made my daughter cry. It started off with a seemingly ordinary guy leaving his house and finding an eerie honking bike horn in front of his door. He rides off on his bike into the gloomy night. Later, he comes across a scary Ronald McDonald doppelganger riding on a tiny, squeaky tricycle. Panicked, the bike rider tries to escape in the other direction, only to stumble upon more scary clowns popping up out of nowhere. Then he spots the Burger King sign and heads towards it in a frenzy, hoping to find safe haven. But it's anything but safe. Burger King is crawling with Pennywise look-alike clowns, all demanding their free Whoppers. Even though this commercial could induce nightmares for weeks, Scary Clown Night was a huge success and even raised the chain sales worldwide by 15%. Burger Clown! Go to! Go to now! Oh, good. I like clowns. Quiznos, Sponge Monkeys. Usually, having an adorable little animal as a mascot will greatly help your brand. You simply can't resist the charm and cuteness they exude. However, apparently in this day and age, the animal doesn't even have to be cute to be effective. A freaky-looking rodent will also do the trick. If you poked about in the dark corners of the internet, then you're probably familiar with sponge monkeys. Yeah, well, those sponge monkeys went viral thanks to their song, We Like the Moon, and later booked a commercial gig with Quiznos. The chain wanted to hop on the rodent's success and put a unique spin on their successful song, renaming it We Love the Subs. We love the subs! Sadly, and understandably, the commercial just left people confused and a little disturbed, and it became one of the biggest fast food blunders of all time. Big mistake. Big. Huge. McDonald's Japan, female Ronald. What an awkward situation. Everyone knows Ronald McDonald. Heck, he's one of the most recognized characters around the world. He's known as a lovable and playful hero for kids of all ages and just a tiny bit scary for adults. But the last thing you would probably want to do is think of Ronald McDonald as sexy. You look cute when you eat those fries. It just doesn't make sense and seems far-fetched for a children's mascot. Yet McDonald's Japan decided to give it a shot. Let's just say the results were not well received. Ronald got a gender-bending makeover in a Japanese TV commercial to entice adults back into the restaurant to sample the revamped menu. The commercial features a stylish female Ronald McDonald in the traditional red and yellow colors, only dressed in outfits that were a little less kid-friendly. With a flowy dress and later a striped bikini with high heels, this dress code has nothing to do with the big red shoes and baggy yellow overalls. Still, while some found it appalling, a few people actually enjoyed it. Hello, lady. The disguise is working, Patrick. Taco Bell, yo quiero Taco Bell. Por favor. This one isn't so much a ridiculous commercial, but more of an iconic rite of passage from the 1990s. Honestly, who doesn't remember the adorable commercials from Taco Bell featuring the adventurous Gidget, better known as the Taco Bell Chihuahua? With its memorable catchphrase, Yo quiero Taco Bell, it's almost impossible not to have that stuck in your head every time you order your tacos. Tell me, doctor. 
How's my cyst? Grande. The most notable commercial of all was the introduction of the Taco Bell Chihuahua to people's screens. The dog seems love-struck by another Chihuahua in an apartment. After running up the stairs to seemingly meet up with the other dog, it keeps going. Why? To go up to the roof instead and ask for Taco Bell. Drop the Chalupa and Viva Gorditas are also honorable mentions from the various pop culture punchlines the talking dog gave us during its on-screen career. The commercials were all a raging success, for the most part, but weren't safe from criticism. A lot of people accused Taco Bell of promoting Hispanic stereotypes and making fun of the Mexican people. After constant reported complaints, the commercials eventually stopped airing. Bless you, Taco Bell. Burger King, Herb the Nerd. Fire roasted peppers and onions. It's Mex. Burger King is definitely not a stranger to weird and creepy commercials. It seems like it's what BK does best. This one, on the other hand, isn't necessarily creepy, but it sure is a little sexist and the opposite of politically correct. There's a word for someone who doesn't do what's good for them. The word is Herb. Herb was basically a nerdy, rich guy with an outmoded fashion sense, notable for being just about the only man in the country who had never eaten a Whopper. He was looking to gain the attention of all the hot women who hang out at Burger King. The only hang-up was that he was so nerdy, women didn't pay him any attention, unless he promised to make them rich one day, too. Even though at first people thought it was a hilarious and relatable commercial, controversy began spreading. What most people got from this commercial was that Burger King was trying to find a way to attract hot women to its restaurants in hopes of meeting their very own Herb and get lucky. A lot of people felt like BK portrayed women as easy gold diggers. Herb the Nerd did become an easily identifiable face on television, but that didn't mean people liked him. This ad campaign was even declared one of the biggest promotional flops of the 1980s. <laughs> Anything else for you today, boys? Pizza Hut, the Pizza Head Show. Oh, look, he's got his father's eyes. Oh. Pizza Hut has been in the game for quite some time now, and usually they make the most perfect, hunger-inducing, delicious-looking pizza commercials ever. But just like any other fast food chain, a few misses are bound to be inevitable. That's what happens when Pizza Hut released The Pizza Head Show, a series of commercials following a slice of pizza as the protagonist of terrifying misadventures. It's party time and we just ordered a Pizza Hut pizza! These commercials aired from 1993 to 1997 and probably scared everyone who ever watched one. The innocent pizza head was put into crazy scenarios in which Steve, an evil pizza cutter, tried to get rid of him. If you truly want to be scared, one of the most unsettling commercials you need to see is the one where Pizza Head goes to world-famous Dr. Steve to get a routine checkup. Let's just say the squishing sound of the pile of donor pepperoni isn't the most soothing. Call 1-800-PIZZA. Get pizza delivered right now. Little Caesars Super Bowl. Who's gonna stop us? <laughs> Everybody loves Super Bowl commercials. Even people who don't follow football find the genius big budget ads amusing. Many companies choose to pay ridiculous amounts of money to have their products shown during the NFL championship game. And last year, Little Caesars was one of them. Indeed, the pizza chain had its first ever Super Bowl commercial, starring none other than Rain Wilson of The Office fame. The idea behind the commercial was to announce that the chain would be delivering again for the first time in 20 years. Little Caesars delivery. That's the best thing since sliced bread. The ad begins with a woman saying that Little Caesars delivery is the best thing since sliced bread. Immediately, we're transported to the sliced bread headquarters where an employee breaks the news to the CEO, aka Rain. The whole office then tries to come up with something to overrule sliced bread and crush Little Caesars. Travel-sized sprinkles and even bread insurance are all proposed, but nothing seems to quite hit the mark. After the CEO finds out that his own employees ordered food from the enemy, all hell breaks loose, and the company slowly but surely falls apart. The last scene shows another Little Caesars delivery, only this time done by the now former CEO. This was the perfect way to promote the return of a beloved feature and get a good laugh all at the same time. <laughs> Jack in the Box, 
Philly Cousins. This burger's delicious. <laughs> Let's make it more delicious! Menu time! Just like Burger King, Jack in the Box tends to make a lot of creepy TV commercials. Maybe that has something to do with the chain's mascot being a frequent star in many horror movies. You know, a giant Jack in the Box bobblehead who walks and talks? That alone is enough to induce nightmares. <laughs> But apart from this scary detail, the setting of this particular commercial is also pretty unsettling. Meant to advertise the chain's new sourdough Philly cheesesteak melts, the ad stars Jack alongside two more Jack-type humanoids with mullets and sports jerseys, and their mom, who's also rocking the mullet hairstyle. Jack stops by the house to let his cousins get a taste of the cheesesteak melts, explaining the ingredients he uses. After teasing Jack a little, the Philly cousins eventually admit to loving the melts, ending the scene with some friendly pestering. In theory, this story shouldn't be so weird, but what freaked most people out was seeing more talking bobbleheads, leaving them wondering how many more there were out there. Apparently, the odd clown head is some sort of genetic mutation that runs in Jack's family tree. Not so reassuring. Nothing beats my delicious fish sandwich. Except another filet. Burger King, hands-free Whopper. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, once again, Burger King deserves another spot on this list, but this time it's not because it made a scary commercial, it's because of a genius one. The hands-free Whopper commercial is all about how liberating multitasking can be, especially when eating Burger King. The video begins with someone playing the guitar, and a question pops up on the screen. In a world of multitasking, how can you use your hands to do your daily activities and still be able to enjoy a Whopper? Then, multiple Multiple people just go on about their day doing their job with a strange plastic device around their neck holding a Whopper. Oh, come on, dude! J yes, okay. You see a guy tattooing someone, a dog walker, a little girl painting her nails, and even a policeman giving out tickets. At the end of the commercial, even the guitarist and singer enjoys his sandwich with the device. The hands-free Whopper sandwich holder was produced by an agency in Puerto Rico to celebrate the chain's 50th anniversary as well as the iconic Whopper. For a while there, it really seemed like fast food was going to get a little faster, but unfortunately that hope was short-lived as Burger King never actually produced nor distributed the gadget. Just imagine if this hands-free Whopper Whopper holder actually made its way into restaurants. <laughs> McDonald's McNugget Buddies. Large fries. Large fries. 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 The 1980s were a very interesting time for commercials. When McDonald's decided to release a bunch of adventure-going animated chicken nuggets called the McNugget Buddies, it seemed like they were joining in on all the commercial fun. The McNugget Buddies were doing everything from playing basketball to solving mysteries and were basically living, talking, puppet versions of their chicken-based counterparts. They had jobs, personalities, and a lot of spunk. You would often see the buddies just sitting in their little cups of dipping sauce, conversing with Ronald, or getting ready to go on a new adventure. What are you making? Sauce. The commercials were obviously a big hit with kids and were beloved all around. In fact, they were so successful that they even inspired a line of Happy Meal toys, the Halloween McNugget Buddies. The one teeny tiny detail that might be perceived as a little weird, however, is the fact that Ronald was doing all kinds of activities with them, only to probably eat them later that day for lunch. But hey, the kids would never assume anything like that, right? Chicken McNuggets. Tune in to more great videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.